Professor from Jamaica and uh, I grew up listening to reggae, dub and stuff like that and also Motown, Motown um, soul music, that's what, what I grew up with. Um, but in those days I didn't, I had no um, ambition to make records or anything like that and um, it wasn't until I started collecting records when I got into collecting music the opportunity came for me to end up making music I got invited to be on a pirate radio station in London and that's where I met Mark and Gus and Ian and Gus was uh, producing for a hip hop band at the time and because I had a lot of uh, old records and break beats and stuff like that he asked me to come to the studio and stuff and mess around and that's how I got into making music The pop music of my time was uh, the ska revival so we had groups like the Specials and the Beat and um, before that the Clash as well that was kind of like the or my circle of friends were into and then after that hip hop came along and that just went elsewhere and that's how I got into old music from the the jazz that they sampled in hip hop got into old music from that and got into um, your more electro -y and um, Detroit techno -y vibe Due to the early in the early days of um, hip hop, when they used to um, you know sample craft work and stuff like that, so you got into other mu hip hop kind of like helped helped me to get into lots of different types of music due to what the DJs were cutting up and producers were sampling. So you know the range of music was uh, influenced by at that time was quite vast. started out there was no grey areas it was basically people either loved it or they hated it That's, that was just, just it simple as that and it felt good the whole thing felt good because we felt active you know we were doing something and, and it's, it's great to, to make something and, and to see it materialise you know you, you spend time writing messing about with the music and then it actually you go and get it pressed off and there's the actual record and, and people are buying it, people are playing it and some people are dissing it as well but it's all good, you know? It, 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 that, felt, that felt great, you know, being able to produce something, you know? And I think in the early days, the, the style of music that was going, because we just had the, the, acid, the acid rave thing happening and then uh, it was kind of a more hip hop element came in, and that's what brought this kind of you know, drum and bass, hip housey type sound. And I think it was a bit alien to a lot of people. I've never been really one sound. There's always been, I've always been making hip hop albums and doing house tracks and, and so on throughout. So um, I don't get bored making the same type of music. I just, I just like different types of music and that's why I end up doing them, you know? And it is nice to, to move away and, 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 you know, if you've been making jazz for four months, it is nice to go off and start doing some other, you know, prog rock or whatever. That is, it makes a nice change, you know. I look for tunes that I like, <laughs> basically, when I DJ. Production, production is not the most important thing. I, I rather, I rather have poor production but good vibe about it than hearing everything. Oh, it's well mixed and this, that, and the other. No, it's. it's is there anything, does it, does it, does it grab, grab me in any way? That's what, what I need to understand. Um,
A lot has happened in dance music, a lot of changes. People done stuff just to get it out. They were, you know, working, doing what they were doing. They had no intentions or ambition to shop it to record, big record labels and stuff like that. That was even, that even come into a lot of people's minds. You know, it's just, they were doing something and they were just getting it out there to people to hear, you know? And what happened, happened. Um, I think technology helped with all that, you know, being able to, you know, the computers and so on. So music production opened, opened up to lots of, lots of different people. People just, you know, just go on with it, just go on with it. And that's all it was about, just making your music and putting it out. But then as time's got on and sales and so on, you know, the, the, it turned more into a, a business. And so many things have changed consequently. It's not just the uh, partying for the sake of partying now. Everything seems more purposeful, more intentional and uh, naive and innocence that happened from the early days has been lost consequently, you know? So, um, some, things, some things are better, as in some people got better structure when they're doing what they're doing, but the, s the spontaneity has seems to have gone because of how the, the business is now. I'm never satisfied with any four hour album. Always after it's finished, I'm like, oh, could have done this better, could have done that better. No, there's not, there's not, not many tracks I go back and listen to and say, yeah, that, that was, um, there's not much more I could have done. That, that's, I'm always complaining about something the other. Basically, Four Hero is held a bit closer to our hearts because it's the, the first record that came out in 89 was a Four Hero record. The first one we ever released was a Four Hero. So um, that's like our baby out of all of them. So we tried to give it that extra push, um, extra time and effort on those releases. I don't think there's any, um, there's no difference in quality from the other projects we do and so on. But um, for who are every album, this one does that, this one, that album does this, this album sounds like that. So we have to kind of keep the same spirit, but try to step it up, push it a little bit further. So that's always in our minds when we're um, making a four hero record as well.